Hi, welcome to Indie ETV. I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Dr. N. Chu. Am I saying that right? Dr. N. Prophet Chu. Dr. Prophet Chu. Okay. And what are you a doctor of? I'm not sure. Doctor of Divinity. Of Divinity. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So are you a pastor at a church, a minister? We are, we've started, we've started a, a, a ministry in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. And are you going to tell us about an experience you had today? Peggy, you're not coming across cl clearly. Are you going to tell us an experience you had? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, my experience that I'm about to share with you all today, uh, the viewing audience, um, For the term that is being used now is called near death experience, an encounter with death, um, hanging in the balance between life and death. My experience takes me back to 2000 and uh, I believe it was 2003 in Venezuela, in Caracas, Venezuela, uh, in Caracas, Venezuela. Um, I was working in, in, a, in, 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 a, in a building uh, on, the, uh, on the avenue, on the avenue of um, San Martin. And I was there, and um, during the time that I was there, I sustained a fall. But uh, I want to remind you, as I tell this, I tell you uh, my uh, testimony. I was already serving God. I, I, I am telling this testimony from a place of a believer, um, an ordained minister, um, working with God. Um, knowing how to call upon God, answering the call. So it's from that place I'm sharing my testimony. And um, I sustained a fall. And the fall was a very traumatic fall. But I got up and I dusted myself and I went home and began to suffer a very excruciating headache. Now the headache, from a zero to 10, the doctors would say, how bad is your headache from a zero to 10? It was not 10. It was like 11, 12, or 13, or even 15. It was a very, 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 very bad headache. And I decided that I was going to pray it out and trust God through the process. But this headache went on all through the night and it got worse. Um, I thought I was gonna die during the night, but I was walking with God at a level where I did not take any medication for that headache. So in the morning I got up and I went to work with a headache. During the time that I was there, that headache continued. But I could not leave because there was a lot of noise. Um, and my headache was already bad. So I believe that the Lord had already begun to lead me on that day 
into the testimony that I'm about to bring to you all. Because I said, I said, Lord, I need to go, but I need the music to stop. And immediately the music stopped. And as the music stopped, I left. <clears throat> I am now in the sort of fear, the sort of fear of San Martin, San Martin. That that is that is very, very, very uh, busy, very, very um real sort of fear there in San Martin Caracas. And um, it is a centro comercial right there in Los Molinos. And um, I staggered my way out of that building and I crossed that traffic, main traffic uh, uh, street there in, in San Martin. And I began to make my way to Puente Nueve Diciembre, Edificio Torre Bay. That's where I was living. And on my way, on 29 December, I began to lose control of my function. I began to collapse. My knees begin to give away beneath me. I begin to lose control and collapse in the street on the Puente Nueve Diciembre, but my building is a high-rising building is that we need to have a consciousness to enter into the big gates. And after entering into the big gates, you have to have consciousness to get onto the elevator, to get into the apartment. But I don't know how I did all of that. But I was now inside of the house. I have no recollection how I got into the big gate of my high of my tall building, into the elevator, and now into the house. But I lay on the bed and I was having what we know now as a left-sided stroke. The left-sided part, the left-sided part of my body, my neck, my head had begun to twist. Now, for the doctors that are listening, they know that that is a person in crisis. And uh, as I lay on the bed, I heard the name Angel. I am on the bed, I'm having a stroke. My face, my neck, my left side is being paralyzed. And I heard the word in my ear, angel. And immediately, this man appeared in, 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 the, in front of me in the air. I did not see his feet. He was hanging in the air. But he was a normal looking man. I can describe the man. The man looked like he was about 30 something years. He had very little hair. And, and he was wearing a, a <coughs> what we call a, an exercise suit, a, 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 a um, sweat suit. He was wearing a sweat suit. And when I saw him, my body had already begun to feel like it was wood. That's what I felt. My body was stiff. It was like, like wood, like wood. 
and I could not bend or, or stand or raise or anything on the bed right there. But I was translated, translated into the bathroom. And when I got there, this water rushed down from inside of me. I'm not talking about urine. I'm not talking about urine. I'm talking about water, 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 water like a waterfall just gushed down out of my body and fell out from me. All of this is going on. I'm translated back into the bed. I know what I'm hearing. I know what I'm seeing. Between this, in this, in this place where I hang between life and death, I am conscious of two worlds. The angel is leading me. I am walking in obedience and I am moving in different steps. When I got back to the bed, I heard onion soup. The angel was still there. But now I got another word. The word is onion soup. But I could not speak. But I was not going to sit there and die. I was going to try to tell the others in the house, I need onion soup. Now they did not know that I was in the other room having a stroke. But I began to make these songs with my mouth in that paralysis state. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> And it was very, very, very loud. And they came running into the room. And when they came running into the room and they saw me, they said, what do you want? And I could not tell them anything except that song that I'm making. And <laughs> yeah. And they heard onion soup. Went back into the kitchen, and I know this, and got soup cooked for me. I brought this soup back and poured this soup into my mouth. They made me drink the soup. And I drank that soup. And after I drank that soup, I am still hanging in the valley of death. I had a conversation with the devil whilst I was inside of that place. And I said to him, listen, you are trying to kill me. I understand that I could die here. I said, but you are not going to kill me. I intend to declare, to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ all the days of my life. If you have to kill me, you're going to have to do it now. Because after this, you can never kill me. And so I'm having this conversation as I hang in the valley of death. The next thing I remember is the nurses. No, not the nurses. The, my, uh, my cousin and her husband came in at that time from work. 
and they walk into the situation, or I think they had called them and told them what was going on, and they walked up to my bed with a nurse. And I'm seeing all of this in and out of that situation there. I am seeing all of this. And the nurse came to take my vital sign. And she said, this woman, this girl, do not have any vital. She's dead. She has nothing. I cannot get anything here. What is she doing here? She should not be here. This woman should be in the hospital. I cannot get anything. There is nothing. She has no, she has no pulse. She has nothing. And I remember after that, they quickly begin to take me out there. But they did not call an ambulance because I did not have insurance. They hold, held me by my right hand and my left hand and begin to carry me to the car. But I had nothing in my knees. I could not be carried. They held me up like a bag to carry me. But I was not able to, to, to be carried very easily because I had nothing. I had nothing to stand on. They are carrying me. And the first hospital they stopped out at is the military hospital where she was a, a, a lawyer. And uh, I know all of these things, even though I am in my valley. And they said, no, that is a, this, this, this is a, 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 a dead situation a critical situation, we, we can take her here. We can receive her here. You have to go somewhere, uh, try the other hospital. And they tried the other hospital. And they said, we cannot receive her there because we do not have certain equipments and so for this, uh, for this uh, 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 crisis, this death this woman is going through. So that was two. You have to take her again. So they take, took me to El Paraiso, the emergency of El Paraiso, uh, La Clinica El Paraiso. And uh, when I got there, they received me into the emergency as, as an emergency. But the moment I got into that emergency. I entered into a realm of great peace and tranquility. I had no more pain. I had no nothing. I was a very, very peaceful, peaceful person inside of that hospital. And all the suffering and pain and screaming and had a distraught, uh, uh, cut and busted and uh, uh, disfigured uh, people were all around me. But that was not me. I was in case in this aura of peace and tranquility and assurance. And I was not experiencing any pain or anything, no paralysis, nothing like that in my body. I had entered into the rest of the Lord in the hospital. And uh, my, my testimony is that through this time, I was constantly connected to this, the, the spirit, the heavenly realm. I was led, I was guided, and I was kept in the heavenly 
uh, provision of God. But I must tell you all, not at any time can I say that I, God spoke to me and I was in heaven. I am not saying that I was in heaven. Uh, like so many other testimonies say that they were in heaven. I am not saying that. I am saying that I was walking through the valley of the shadow of death with a left-sided stroke that the paralysis was on the left side and the pain was so excruciating and my body a shut down on me and an angel was sent on assignment into that room to begin to guide me through two words uh, what we know in the prophetic is word of knowledge word of knowledge is that word that god sends into that situation that is yoked, that is fueled with faith and performance, that the person that is receiving that word of knowledge could not have known at that time that information. I could not have known that as I was going through the valley of the shadow of death, that God will recommend the greatest physician will recommend onion soup for my deliverance. I did not know that going through the valley of the shadow of death, that the Lord would recommend my having to be flushed out from that water of death that was trapped in my body. But I can tell you, as that water was released out of my body, and that word came to me, onion soup. And I thought, and those are things uh, took place that I begin to walk out out of the valley of the shadow of death. I did not uh, recuperate in the hospital like some people do. I was supernaturally taken out of the process of rehabilitation. I don't remember re being rehabilitated. I don't remember going to therapy. I don't remember none of those things. All that I know is I came through the valley of the shadow of death uh, a few days later after the doctors uh, administered the the recommendations and everything, I went back to work. And from there, I began to walk in the supernatural. I began to walk in the miracles. I began to see the miracles and the signs and the wonders following me everywhere I go. Many things that I did, I can see the supernatural hand of God. But before I got to that place, where I overcome death, the, the word of God says that, that Jesus Christ, he overcome death, hell, and the grave. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it talks about that we will one day put on the incorruptible and we will put on immortality and i believe what is happening some of us are getting a taste and a glimpse of what the other side will look like on that day uh what i want to say this is not my only that experience i have had other that experience out of the body and uh, different types of uh, death experience 
uh, that I was delivered from by prayer and fasting. So this is not the only one, Peggy. There is more. There is more. But this particular one, the Lord intervened and brought me through by his angel and by his word of knowledge. And I will testify and I will uh, continue to speak out publicly and speak out loudly because I have walked through this. I have been through this and you cannot take this away from me. God, by his spirit and by his word, I love this scripture. It's Acts 10, 38, 39, 40, 41. It says that Jesus Christ did not reveal himself unto everyone, but those who are called to be witnesses of that which they have heard and that which they have seen. And we are coming back to tell you this is what I've seen. This is what I've heard. There is another life. There is a, a valley that we go through. When we are dying, we go through different steps. And based on the life that you live here, that those steps could be ugly or those steps could be beautiful. In my case, I was, he, was, he sent me supernatural help. Angels on assignment from God came to help me. I thank God that he made me know that I was a fruit of the resurrection. I came back. Death was defeated, just as Jesus, as Jesus said. I have defeated hell, death, and the grave. Well, I am telling you this afternoon. God, show me that true Jesus Christ living in me and through me, living with him, that death has been defeated in my life. I give all honor and all praise to my God. It is him that I live and breathe in my being. I know with great conviction and without a shadow of a doubt that that is the work of the living God in the lives of those whom he has chosen and those who are not yet in Christ but are having these kinds of experiences. They are marked before the foundation of the earth to be witnesses of that which he has chosen and allowed them to see. And many of these people will raise their voices to God after they have had these experiences. They may not even know that the Lord has been bringing them unto himself. But through the experience, they come face to face. There is a God. There is a God. In this case, is not a God. Our God. He is the true and the living God. I'm excited. I'm in awe. So what the Lord is doing through and near that experience. I'm excited for the truth coming to the surface. As I was telling Peggy, there are many doubters. There are many people of unbelief. There are many uh, what you would call atheists and agnostics. They don't believe. 
that there is a God. They don't believe that God walks with man. They do not believe that God talks with men. They do not believe that God holds our lives in his hand. But I am here as according to Acts 10 38. I have seen it, I hear it, I'll speak it, I'll tell the world. Jesus is truth, he is real, and he's real in our lives. And this is my experience. This is my truth, this is my walk. And this is what I was entrusted with to bring to you this afternoon. What I've, what I've been through, I cannot deny it. What I've been through, I have heard it. What I've been through, I saw it. And in that valley, between life and death, I was very conscious, very cognizant that there was two worlds the physical and the, and, the, and the spiritual. How does a person function in two worlds at that time? That's what happened. I was not in either world. I was between the both worlds. And I believe that that is why I continue to have more experiences because there are details that I cannot bring with bring to you this afternoon. Details that will continue to bring you closer to the truth and the reality that there is there is a hell and there is a heaven. We either are going to hell or we go to heaven. But there is that gap, that gap before we finally arrive at that place. Over to Peggy. Thank you. Now that is a testimonial. Glory to God. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you very much. You know, Peggy, I just want to say, you know, that whilst we were waiting to bring this testimony to the world, I came under attack. I came under a vicious attack. I believe so. Um, I was not able to lift my hand, my left hand, for 12 days. My left hand became paralyzed. Pain, an excruciating pain. And I was not able to lift my hand for 12 days. But my apostle prayed for me. And on the 12th day, I lift my hand up back into the sky. This is waiting on you to bring this to the world. I was hacked. The FTC calls it identity theft. Impersonated me. My internet would not work. I went through so much of testing before I can bring this piece of ministry to you this afternoon. Yeah. It was not a simple thing. Right. I would remind you that this is our third time that we attempted to bring this to the public. Yeah. The devil did not want us to bring this to the public, but God made a way where there is no way. And today, with a strong voice and no pain in my arm, and I'm able to lift my hands back over my head and Social Security giving me a new Social Security card. I stomp on the devil this afternoon and I bring my testimony that there is a true and living God. And he talks to man. And he walks with man. And he loves man. And we are not here by our own, our own, 
our own ideas and our own philosophies, but we are here because God has ordained us to be here in this generation, in this earth, for such a time as this. I've been ordained to be in this time with my testimony. And I would, I would just uh, add that, add to that. The first time they called me in Trinidad and said, Prophet, will you bring your testimony for us tonight on slow music? My mother became blind. My mother became blind. When I came back from giving the testimony, my mother had cried during the night because when I was going to give the testimony, the devil used her and she cursed me out. When I came back, mother cried all through the night. And I said, mother, touch not God, anointed, and do his prophets no harm. I said, devil, back off. Don't use my mother against my testimony. Next day, my mother was blind. We took her to the hospital. The doctor said she got glaucoma. We do not know how quick we can save these eyes, but the pressure has already gone up into the eye. And this is her situation. And within a very short time, my mother was completely blind. She never saw me again. What I remember, I remember going on the radio and bringing my testimony of what God has done in my life. I just thought I had to add that. We were fought in this, uh, in this same time to bring this testimony to the world. But we won. <laughs> we won. We are victorious. We have conquered. We have overcome. And I just want to thank Peggy for not giving up, for not throwing in the towel, and for having that spirit of determination to recognize and know that we had to bring this testimony to the world. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. What do you think about what's going on right now with the world? And do you think this our near death experiences have anything to do with it? Um, there is a preparation um, uh, of us, that, uh, those that are chosen whether you're in Christ or you're not in Christ, uh, the Lord has sovereignly chosen witnesses to, uh, to alert, to make the people conscious of the life to come. You see, many people think that this is it. This is where we begin. And this is where we end. But no, we begin in our mother's womb. But this is not where it's going to end. It's not going to end here. And many people, uh, as I was saying on Facebook recently, many people are looking forward to this uh, funeral, to this death, where they uh, gave up the body and they put them in the grave, in a coffin. And they call that the end. But that's not what the word of God says. He did not, the word of God does not say that. He does not leave us at that place. The reason why so many of us are stuck in that, because we have not been delivered from that mentality that there is a promise, a promise that we we live in the hereafter with God. 
There is a year after. It's the only place you can find that is in the Bible. The book of Revelation, chapter 21. You can see that there is a new Jerusalem. God has revealed to me the different times and seasons that there is a new Jerusalem. Streets of gold. Uh, 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 building that is made, up, made out of stones that we will not stop here. Now, I know there is a reality and the reality is many people go to go into the coffin and put six feet down in the ground. But for those of us who have the revelation, we are not accepting that. We are not accepting that. We are going with it. We shall not see death, but we are passing from death to life. And who gave us that promise? And who told us that? Well, Jesus Christ was the firstborn of the resurrection. We are the fruit and the generation of the resurrected Christ. And I'm declaring myself to be one of those people that are walking in the resurrection and walking as one of what, the fruit of the resurrected Christ. Death has lost its power, its grip on me. And uh, uh, Peggy, I have had the opportunity to go to the bedside and to the hospital and to the nursing home to where people were at the point of death. And I have come face to face with a spirit that is called death. It is cold like the deep freeze. And it jumps from one person onto another. And after I prayed for this woman in the nursing home with the media and the doctors and all the, the, legal, the legalities surrounding the woman that they were about to pull the plug of her life, we saw that after I prayed, the woman, the machine, the heart monitor came back to life. Do you know how it, she came back to life? She came back to life. When I heard a song, I heard it. It was a song that she used to sing when she was alive. And now that she laid in a coma, the only person that could hear the song that she used to sing was me. And I turned to the parents and I said, listen, I am hearing a song. Is this the song that the girl used to sing when she was out of a coma? And I sang the song for them and they said, yes, that is our favorite song. And I went to her heart and I said to her, Pamela, listen, I'm singing this song to you. Wake up, come out. The spirit of death is defeated. And just as Jesus said, Lazarus, come out from the grave. I said to her, Pamela, come forth. And that machine, came back to life. And my God, I will never forget what took place in that room. All the ministers, all the clergy, in the robes, in the colors, the doctors, in the courts, everyone rushed into that room as that girl came back, as that girl began to breathe. And I walked away, cold, like the deep freeze, and the spirit of death rested on me. And I turned to the Lord and I said, Lord, you did not bring me here to fail. That spirit of death, that girl was brain dead, and that thing came on me. And I said, Lord, take this thing off me. And within a few seconds, this thing lifted off me. And after that, I knew that once again, 
we had had come face to face with death. And the Lord Jesus Christ showed me that death is defeated. So what he's saying, he's saying, you hold, you hold life in your hands. You do not hold death. That is defeated. You do not accept that. You do not claim that. You resist that. It's already done through me. I'm giving you opportunities now to go and establish this truth in the earth that life is coming from me. And every time we come face to face with someone that is dying, if that person is there prematurely and it's not that person time to go, we are walking into that situation and we are speaking and saying, death, remember? You're defeated. I know who you are. You know who I am. You can't stay here. You got to go because you are defeated. So it's, it's a mighty, mighty move of God, a radical move of God as we continue to defy. We continue to defy gravity. We continue to defy, uh, defy those uh, 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 lies and deception and those 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 uh, 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 those messages that are contrary to the Bible, and I just love this very, 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 very undeniable aspect of the Bible that we are dealing with right now, and that is death. And what I believe, also in addition, is that we are surrounded. Right now, in this pandemic, by the spirit, the spirit, it is the spirit that is on assignment here. It has come to swallow up as much people that it could swallow up through this pandemic. But God's prophets need to step out and address the spirit of death that is all around the world and say, no, you are defeated. This can continue. But if we don't speak, the pandemic continues to ravish and swallow up as much people that believe that this is the word of God. This is not the word of God. Some people believe this is the judgment of God. This is not the judgment of God. Our sins have brought this on us. But there is a promise. And the promise is it's time for us to address the spirit of death in the earth. He's all around us. So the spirit of death, you say that like it's an enemy? It is. He's an enemy. Jesus said, Jesus said, all oh, deaths. Where is your sting? You have lost your sting. You see, as we begin to address death, uh, we are seeing in the word. Uh, it's 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 a uh, people have become captives to the spirit. The spirit is saying, "You live all the days of your life hearing me." Whether it's an accident, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's suicide, whatever it is, but I am the tormentor. Peggy is the tormentor. He torments you. Most people spend most of their life thinking about what would happen to them because that tormentor is always there in front of you with that uh, 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 with that projection and that um, reminder, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. But that's not what the word of God says. Jesus said, you shall live. You shall live and you shall declare the word of the living God. So whose word are we going to believe as people of God? Whose truth, are, whose, whose messages are we going to believe? 
Are we going to believe that we will be swallowed up by, by spirit of death through all these different things that are around us? No. We have to believe the word of God. He has lost his sting. He's an enemy. And he masquerades in so many different aspects of our lives to remind us that he is our God and that we worship him. But when you get this revelation that I bring to you this afternoon, you start resisting that message and know that by yourself, you have lost that battle. But with Christ Jesus in your life, your journey to living has begun. I could not do this without Jesus Christ. I could not. My life has been a life of, of, of um, idolatry. I was, you know, I serve just like everybody else. I believe in all type of stuff. I could not win this battle. But when I received Jesus Christ, I came face to face with the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts 1, 8. After the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall be a witness. I never was a witness. I never talk about Jesus Christ. I never knew about Jesus Christ. I was a Roman Catholic. My whole generation is a Roman Catholic. But when I was baptized with the Holy Ghost, he empowered me to become a witness, a genuine witness, not a Jehovah witness, a real witness. I saw it. I live it. I've been there. I've done that. I witness that he is God by the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, thank you so much for giving of your heart and your spirit. Your spirit's on fire. <laughs> Mighty God. Mighty God. Um, in Venezuela, I came face to face with another dead experience. Um, that experience is one that on another occasion, and I know there will be, I would like to share with your public how I suffer a hemorrhage and at the point of death, I was taken to a church. Can you come back and on camera? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So you've been off camera for quite a while. Okay. I don't see you. Um, so yes, um, I'm a voice. I'm not a face. <laughs> okay. I'm a voice. I'm not a face. Okay. So um, I know you need face, but I'm a voice. So um, what, what what we can say, we can say that um, he wants this to go out. He wants this to go out. He wants this to be told. And he has provided for you the continued, uh, the continued, provision and substance and material for which you can correctly and accurately come before a world that is in denial that there is a true God and that God is revealing himself to us. So I believe that we are embarking on a very, 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 very a uh, 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 great move of God as we continue to delve into the dead experiences, the out of the body experiences, and um, those who encounter the Lord in the heaven 
and come back and share their testimonies, what, the, what it's all about being up there with the Lord um, in the short time that uh, they would have been with him up there. Um, I know that uh, we have a lot, a lot to uh, encounter with the Lord in the weeks and days ahead. As I, we, as I bring forth this message to you all this afternoon, I am certain that God will give me more to bring here to the world. Um, so I want to thank you. I know it sounds like uh, we've been here for quite a while, um, uh, you know, uh, but I believe that um, it's the leading of the Holy Spirit. And um, it's the time has come. This is the appointed time. This is the appointment. Jesus Christ is alive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.